oftentimes we will get a list of websites or a list of LinkedIn companies, whatever it might be that we need to do some research on specifically account research. And we need to figure out, does this company qualify for our, our outreach? Does it not? And there's basically three ways that we pull this data uh, in order to get it. And so most often we'll use Clagent, a Google search, or a company called Zenros. And so for some reason, if this is your first time on my YouTube channel uh, and you've never heard of Clagent, this is the AI agent that Clay has made. Also, if this is your first time on my YouTube channel, my name is Eric Nosowski. I run Growth Engine X, which we send anywhere from four to five million emails a month at this point. And we've got some pretty crazy customers like clay.com and instantly.ai and some other people we do outbound for. And so my goal, whenever we run outbound campaigns for people is to take what they would do in 10 minutes of research and work backwards from that to figure out what the research they're doing and how does that change your messaging so we can automate that on behalf of our customers. So oftentimes we might get a list of law firms and we need to figure out do they do a specific kind of law that would make them good for us to reach out to? Because if you just search legal services on the industry filters, you're going to get everybody and we need to further qualify them. So Clagent, Google searches, and Zenros are three different ways that you can do this kind of website research. Um, and here, I, I just wanted to go over the pros and cons of when we use each. So Clagent is basically the way you can think about Clagent is it's a Google search powered by AI. So it has access to the internet. It could go out and it could visit the websites. My personal opinion is AI is really, really, really good at doing one thing at a time. And who knows when GPT-5 comes out, I don't, maybe Sam Altman will, will uh, give us a great Christmas gift over the summer. But till then, GPT-40 mini is the model that we use and it's the cheapest one to use at scale. And it's really only good at doing one thing at a time. So it's really, really great at grabbing one specific data point from what is very unstructured data. So the most common thing that we use this for is if we're looking for reviews on somebody's website or case studies on somebody's website, those are listed in all kinds of different places. And so Clagent is really good at parsing out that data and then finding the reviews and the case studies and all that other stuff. Pricing as well is one of those things where it's most often on domain backslash pricing, but if it's not there, then Clagent can go out and find it. So if you don't know where the data is on the website and you need one specific data point, Clagent is really, really good. Again, if you don't know where the data is on the website, but you need three specific data points, see if Clagent can handle it in one run, but then just add on two Clagents on top of your initial one, and it's going to be super cheap to be able to run. Uh, one of the main things is Clagent is ridiculously cheap for the amount of value that you're getting out of it. So then the cons I would say is it just falls short. If you want four to seven fields, even from the same page, you don't reliably get that every single time. And then you also can't train it on examples. So I'll see some people who are using Clagent and they will say, hey, go to this website, find the description, and then tell me if it's a law firm that does the you know, family services that we want, want it to be. Can't really train it on what is family services for one law firm. And then even if somebody mentions family on a law, another law firm, why would it not be a good example? So you don't have any training and it doesn't self verify the data. So sometimes, and this is probably the, the biggest rub I have with Clayton is one time I asked it to go find case studies listed on nobleprojectswebsite.com. So I asked it to go to nobleproject.com and find case studies. And I purposely did that because Noble Project doesn't really have case studies. They have reviews more so. And so then the data that it found was Noble Project's website was done by an agency and that agency listed them as a case study and it found that as a case study and it kind of messed it up. And so then that's what I mean, prone, prone to domain drift over, over here can accidentally pull from external sources or relevant pages. That's the main problem with it. But if you want to grab unstructured data from websites and you're doing one or two at a time, man, it's freaking, it's just so great. and It's so cheap to be able to run. It's really, really, really great. The other way that we'll score websites is we'll do a Google search. And so I think, so if you were to say, hey, does this law firm or does this e-commerce website include wholesale on its website? Clagent might get that, Clagent might not get that, but you can do a site search. So you could say site nobleproject.com and then uh, in quotes put wholesale and Google search, will, it's either going to include it or it's not. It's going to be right there. And so it's, it, it works more of like a precise keyword check. It's just more expensive to be able to run. And sometimes you can run into rate limits. We personally use serper.dev to be able to do this. There's other times that we'll try to do things like 
So Zenros, which I'm going to talk about next, and Clagent can't access similar web pages anymore because they got blocked. But what you could do is you could do a search for the similar web URL, and then in the preview text of the Google search, it'll say what you're looking for. But in order to find that, you need to do something kind of crazy where, I'm not sure if you know this about Google searches, but if you do site similarweb.com backslash, I think it's overview, backslash growthenginex.com, and then in quotes, total visits, it will make the likelihood that in the preview text, total visits is shown in the preview text. And then the only thing that I have against it is sometimes it'll show that in the preview text, and then sometimes <laughs> that search won't work. So you really have to, you know, kind of play with it. And that's kind of just an unfortunate thing. And so Google search also fails when you're trying to find multiple keywords uh, at one time, but it can scan the entire website. So it, you might not need to find multiple keywords at one time because it's literally looking at the entire website. Clagent is picking a path and then going to it. And if the pages that it picked doesn't include what you were looking for, then your SOL and it's not gonna work. Google search is getting everything. Zenros, whatever URL you give it, that's the only place that it's visiting and that's all it's gonna do. So then Google is a little bit more expensive as well. But anyway, with Zenros, we use this in other ways. We will use this to one, sometimes we will pair Clagent with Zenros and we'll say, hey, go find the pricing page. Then we get the URL of the pricing page and then we'll use Zenros to scrape all of the content from that page. So then we get not just, and that's maybe something Clagent will fail at. And that's, what, that's a great example. If you are looking at SaaS companies and you say, what's their pricing? Sometimes Clagent will return and it'll say, uh, hey, their pricing is $10 a month, but it'll keep completely leave out. There's a $10 a month plan, a $50 a month plan, and a $100 a month plan. It's like a perfect example of what I'm talking about there. And so then what we will do with Zenros is sometimes have Clagent find the pricing page, then use Zenros to scrape the entire thing, and then use another AI to look at the data that was scraped. And then you can train that AI next to then say, okay, this is the pricing plan and just give it examples to be able to work off of. So it's one way that we'll use Zenros. We'll also use Zenros to just pull the content from the, the page. The, uh, the real thing that Zenros is amazing at is they have built a platform that one, does all the proxies for you. And if you don't know why you need proxies when you're scraping, say you wanna scrape something like similarweb.com that I just talked about, they know that people are, one, the way that they grow is through SEO and people being curious about website analytics and then they rank number one for the website analytics. And then people go to the page and that's how people get introduced to their tool and that's their main growth strategy. In order to use that as a growth strategy, they know that people will be scraping their data. And so some people completely circumvent using the similar web paid plans because they can scrape the similar web uh, programmatic pages. And like me, which it's publicly available. LinkedIn lost a lawsuit about this. There's nothing wrong with doing that. You can come after me. Anyway, so then... What Zenros is really good at, and I'm using similar web as an example. I think Zenros fails at scraping similar web now because they like blocked it and something. But anyway, switch it over to if you want to scrape crunch base pages or something like that, use Clagent to go find the crunch base pre crunch base page because it's not as black or white um, with similar web where it's the same every time. It's not as black or white as that. So use Clagent to find the crunch base page, but then don't ask Clagent for the recent news, the funding round, and the founder and all that other stuff. Use Zenros because they will have the proxy network to get around the anti-scraping uh, blockers of Crunchbase. And then they have an auto parse feature so that because Crunchbase's programmatic pages are the same every time, you can then push out the, uh, you know, the recent news, the fundraising round, how much they raised and all those things in the exact same JSON so that you can keep your scraping very, very accurate. And the results are in the same fields every time and you don't have to rerun it with AI and all that other stuff. And so basically just, and you might've noticed I'm just working off this uh, open AI because I was about to put it in a Google doc, but I said to myself, why would I lie to everybody? <laughs> I just made it an open AI. I talked through what I wanted to talk about first and then outputted this. So we use Clagen for most things, I would say. It gives us one, and when it says one unpredictable data point, it's one pretty predictable data point with some weird things. So even when we're finding a case study from somebody's website or we're looking for pricing or something like that. We'll always run the Clagent and then we'll run another AI after that. And Clagent might cost 0.0001 to go find the case study. 
and then to go confirm that the case study came from the website and it's actually the case study, that might be 0. 0.000001 or something. So it's really cheap to do that. Uh, very, very flexible. It's our go-to. It's also the easiest to train my team on. Google search, this is, it, hey, I want to check this entire website for this keyword or these five keywords or something like that. We're using that all day. Um, Google search also has some advantages of, you know, you could scrape Instagram accounts, which I have another video on that, but we don't have to get into that. So you don't have to scrape Instagram, but you can scrape Google instead, which is way easier. And then Zenros, when you know the page or you're trying to scrape programmatic SEO pages, like from built with or from Crunchbase or from craft.co or any of these businesses, you can get that data. They have the proxy and they do the parsing for you. And it's really, really, really nice. So when you're trying to make your decision, like I said, probably your go-to is most often going to be Clagent because of just the accuracy, the versatility, and the cost. But then Google Search and Zenros are really, really great options after that as well, too. And so I hope this video was helpful to you all.